Hey guys, gals, friends, neighbors, sworn enemies, whoever, whoever is watching. Uh, today I want to talk about, uh, you know, we, we've spent some time talking about the Plugin Alliance consoles. Uh, today I want to focus on the SSL because um, there's quite a few options. Uh, they have um, three different models of SSLs that we can pull from and within that there's some different EQ settings, uh, EQ types, so it's worth uh, a 10 minute episode all, all uh, to itself. All right, so let's look at the stars of the show for today. We have the SSL 4000E, uh, the traditional black knob. This is, you know, one of the most famous uh, circuits ever. Uh, and then we, in that, you know, in that same thing, the 4000E, we have the brown knob uh, EQ model we're gonna listen to. All right, then we move up to the 4000G. Uh, a lot of times people call it the pink knob or, or, or just the G, the 292 circuit. Um, and also within the same plugin, the 4000G plugin, we have the orange knob circuit. Some people call it the Pultec uh, version. And then we have the, the new 9000J. And, but we're gonna, we're gonna um, do two uh, moments of the 9000J because you can choose between the original curve here or you can flip this knob right here and get to the E-Series curve, which is exactly what we're gonna do because they sound very, very different. All right, so that said, let's get started. I've got uh, probably 12 tracks or so, 16, uh, from an album I'm getting ready to mix and uh, have a, a relative balance. And what you'll see is on all of these plugins, I have some pretty aggressive EQ because I think that's the best way for you to hear the differences between the types of circuit. But those curves uh, or, or those settings are um, consistent from um, console to console to console to console. So we're getting a very apples to apples, so to speak, uh, comparison as well as you'll see the, the gain knob here. I'm driving some signal into the plugin so we can kind of hear the saturation and the harmonic content of the console as it's being driven, because those are those vary as well. So enough talk, let's get busy here. I'm gonna let a couple bars pass, and then I'm going to engage the 4000E black knob curve, okay? Okay, I, 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 I love that sound. It's punchy, it's aggressive, it's in your face. Um, the, 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 the top end isn't excessively glassy or shiny at, at all. Um, and that's why you can boost maybe this upper, upper filter here. You can really get away with cranking that on some acoustic guitars or electric guitars uh, because that upper octave isn't getting out of control on you, you know? Um, now let's do a comparison side by side with the black knob versus the brown knob. I'll switch after about two bars, okay? Okay, you hear that? It's, it's all of a sudden it's two di very different consoles. With the brown knob selected, the low, the impact of the kick drum isn't the same. We do lose some low frequency. However, in, there's areas in the top mid and stuff that's, that, that's smoother. It just is. So um, that's, you know, that's a great tool. We can choose between these, these two types within that same plugin and have a different sound. All right, so that said, let's move on to the 4000G. Um, this is a completely different, brand new type of EQ uh, from what we've heard before. Basically, I, I don't want to get too technical, but the, the shelving filters on the top and bottom have a pre-boost cut, right? And also they have a pre-cut boost. So that makes um, some emphasis on, let's say we, we choose 10,000 cycles for our shelf. That, that creates some, some focus on 10,000 cycles and takes some focus away from what's just underneath there or vice versa. So it's a completely different sound. Also in the two mid-range bands, they went to a proportional cue. So it's a very different sounding circuit. All right, let's let a couple bars pass and then we'll, we'll play it. Okay, you, you heard the mid-range focus is entirely different, entirely different. Uh, now, just a little back history, what a lot of guys did 
uh, when they got the G series, you know, the, a lot of a lot of our favorite mixers uh, ever have the 4000 Gs. Uh, but but what a lot of them did is they put the black knob um, EQ, you know, like the four, the E, we'll call it, in certain channels uh, of their consoles, so they still had that curve to use on drums or or various other things, and maybe they would leave the G series curve on guitars or something like that. A couple channels where maybe you need to get really creative because it has more boost, more cut because of that filter shape and stuff. It, you're able to get very creative with this uh, with this type of circuit. It's always been a go-to for me when I bring up, a, let's say, a synth pad or something and, and it's just not fitting in the mix properly. And I really, I really want to to really mess with it and mangle it and get something different to, to fit the mix and get the attitude that I want, you can pull out the G and get crazy and it'll, it'll, it'll go with you, it'll go right there. All right, so now within this same plugin, the 4000G, uh, they, Dirk also gave us the option of the, the orange knob uh, EQ. Uh, a lot of people called this the pull tech. Basically, that's because they modeled the curves of some vintage uh, tube valve-based EQs. And, and it does have a, it has a, a, a very different sound. Um, a lot of, a lot, in a lot of ways to me, it's in the high frequency. So what I, what I did here is let's listen to just the acoustic guitars. And I've, I've really jacked up the, the high frequency. It's like plus 15, okay, at uh, 10K, I believe, or nine, 10K. So let's listen to the G. A couple bars later, I switch to the orange. Here we go. You hear that? All of a sudden, the high frequency, you know, just kind of gets glassy and in a good way. It gets it gets pretty. Um, the, the transient detail of, of, of the picks on the guitar and things like that, it, there's just an air around it that the pink knob didn't have. So the, again, that's just great information for you guys to have when you're choosing you know, which uh, EQ curve or plug-in to use on various, uh, various instruments. Okay, so that's the 4000G. And now let's pull up the 9000. Okay, when this guy came along, it was an entirely new thing. The, it, they went to a all capacitor free circuit, a different preamp. I mean, everything about this guy was different. And as a result, we opened up a top octave that the E, uh, you know, the 4000 never had. And as well as in the bottom octave. So it, you know, it opens up a whole new, whole new uh, sound stage. Okay. So let's, let's do the same thing here. We're going to let like a bar pass and then I'm going to bypass or unbypass these plugins and we'll hear the impact that the 9000 has on the sound. Here we go. You hear how that comes alive? Not only do we have that, we still have that signature SSL punch, we have that mid-range thing, but all of a sudden that top oct octave and that bottom octave just take on a whole new life that the 4000 console never had, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna let a couple bars of this pass, and then I'm gonna switch to the alternate EQ curve down here at the bottom. You see how we can uh, select the, the E button? Okay, I'm gonna do that after about two bars, three bars, something like that, here we go. Okay, you hear how the, the, the mid-range, it, it just changes. It's a, it's a whole different animal. So we can use this, you know, these two EQ settings to our advantage within our mix. For example, in my own mixing, a lot of times I bring up the 9000 and on electric guitars, let, or acoustic guitars even, let's say we have um, power chords, hard left, hard right. But when they were tracking it, they didn't really maybe do a good job of alternating something within the guitar or, or in the amp or the speaker cabinet. And basically we have a left and right version that are the same thing. So we want to create just a little bit of separation from these guitars. You know, used to that meant you had to get a little creative with your EQ. Now I can just select the, the you know, I can copy the EQ from one channel to the next and select the E curve instead of the, the traditional curve. And bam, it, it's, it's an entirely different sounding, you know, instrument. The, the mid-range is so different that, you know, even 
out of the sweet spot, you hear both guitars very distinctly. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna play a little bit of the primary consoles back to back. I wanna, we wanna listen to the E-Curve Black Knob 4000. We wanna listen to the 4000G, you know, the pink knob. And then we're gonna do both models of the 9000, just back to back to back so we can really focus in on the differences. All right, here we go. There you have it, four completely different sounds from otherwise the same company. All right, so I hope that brings a little clarity to you guys. Um, you know, for example, in my own mixing, um, people will ask, do you really need uh, all of those options of the SSL? And, and my answer is yes, I actually use all of these. For example, if I was starting a rock and roll record today, boom, I'm going black knob SSL 4000E all day. Uh, probably on every channel and a few supplemental channels here and there where I really want the mid-range to do something different, I'll pull up the G-curve on some electric guitar passes or whatever. But I don't want the shiny top octave on, on a song, you know, in that form of music. I want that aggressive mid-range thing, you know, Marshall, uh, you know, Les Paul into a Marshall, right? That, that's what I want the focus to be on. Where uh, here in Nashville, of course, I'm gonna work on my share of modern country, pop country. I do a, a good bit of pop music, stuff like that. Where then I can switch to the 9000 and that extra octave uh, of you know, um, air on the top is exactly what I need for some of those uh, songs to really take life, as well as the bottom end. So I use these all day, every day. This is my number one go-to tool. And I, I'm, I'm just in love with, with um, the, you know, the, the sound of SSL, and I love how accurately, I mean, astonishingly accurately, they captured that, it, along with, you know, new bells and whistles, like, uh, um, you know, um, a wet, dry knob on the compressor, and th things we never even had on the original console. So um, I, 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 the, I'm just in love with these tools, and I hope maybe, you know, hearing these examples have given you guys some clarity and maybe some knowledge on when and how to employ some of these plugins on your own mixes. All right, happy mixing guys.